In August of 1983, the Ford Motor Company introduced its top new personal luxury coupe, the Continental Mark 7. And the Mark 7 was a radical departure from the Mark 6 that preceded it, an overly boxy and, shall we say, unfortunate looking vehicle that never really quite looked right as it tried to emulate the Mark 5, but with shrunken proportions. In stark contrast, the Mark 7 was a beautiful looking automobile, particularly in LSC form. And while it had a number of new styling themes associated with it, it did carry a number of Lincoln traditions like the vertical Rolls-Royce style grille, as well as the faux spare tire trunk hump, both of which were started on the Mark III. To complement the Mark 7's high-tech looks was a bunch of high-tech content, including onboard trip computers and message centers, automatic climate control, four-wheel air suspension, four-wheel disc brakes, and a whole host of power goodies like power windows, door locks, seats, and mirrors. And all Mark 7s had that wonderful feature, the electric trunk pull-down that Cadillac owners, I'm sure, really enjoyed. The Mark 7 was also the first vehicle to feature something other than sealed beam headlamps up front. and said these composite lamps with replaceable bulbs. You can imagine the designers loved these new headlights as opposed to the old sealed beam headlamps that really every car had to use and consequently the headlights always look the same. This allowed for a lot more creative flexibility, if you will, and gave the car a really nice tasteful looking appearance. Overall, the Mark 7 on the outside was a grand looking vehicle and certainly one with presence. But it was on the inside where designers really tried to emphasize high technology and change from the interior design themes that were employed on the Mark VI and previous Mark vehicles to something more modern. In that quest for modernity, designers as well as engineers developed a unique Continental Mark VII for 1985, and that was the Comtech Continental Mark VII. Now, before we talk more about the Comtech Mark VII, let's recall other vehicles that had high-tech interiors in the 1980s, and more specifically, the 1986 Buick Riviera, which introduced CRT screens, that is CRT touchscreens, to automobiles in modern times. The 86 Riviera had what Buick called its graphic control center, and it was a CRT screen that you would touch to affect changes to everything from the stereo to the climate control system to displaying various readouts like a tachometer, service intervals, trip computers, and a whole host of elements. And while these types of touchscreens are commonplace on modern vehicles, recall that in the 80s that this was completely novel technology and often people hated it. In fact, the CRT screen that found its way into the 1986 Riviera was only continued for a few model years before it was sunset because customers simply disliked it so much. They didn't like having to take their eyes off the road to try to find a button to turn the volume up or to turn the heat or the air conditioning up, where on those touchscreens there was no ability to have tactile feel to simply just reach over and not take your eyes off the road and affect change to one of the settings. You had to take your eyes off the road, look at the screen, push the button, and then return your eyes to the road. In part also because the adjustment buttons were relatively small little chiclets on the CRT screen. They weren't large buttons that could be easily touched on bumpy roads, for an example. But one of the things that the Comtech Mark 7 had was a very similar touchscreen that Ford was testing in these Mark 7s to see if customers would accept it. And to that point, it appears that Ford made about 50 Mark 7s with these. And the functionality of the Comtech Mark 7 was very similar to what would appear one year later on the Buick Graphic Control Center. More specifically, the Comtech really controlled all the in-car systems of the Mark 7, everything from temperature to observing what fuel economy the car was delivering to a trip computer to having screens for time as well as a date calendar, to also having mode control and speed alarms as well as service reminders, to allowing the owner to perform a diagnostic check of key systems that the computer interfaced with, and you could also change the units 
and how they were displayed from English to metric or vice versa. The Comtech also came with a steering wheel that was modified from what was in a normal Mark 7, and more specifically, it had a number of steering wheel controls. You could do everything from turning the headlights on to turning on the windshield washers to changing the radio station to increasing the volume on the radio and all at the tip of your fingertips with the controls that you see here that are part of the steering wheel. This again was something that was relatively novel for the time period. Although Pontiac would also be introducing steering wheel controls around this time, in vehicles like the wonderful Pontiac 6000 STE. Needless to say, it appears that Ford decided not to bring the Comtech to a broader market, and in all likelihood, my guess is that the initial trials with customers really failed, frankly, at least if the feedback that Ford received on the Comtech was similar to what Buick received when it introduced its graphic control center. So Ford perhaps dodged a bullet here in not introducing this piece of high technology into its Mark 7, while Buick did not have the same fate given that it introduced a piece of technology that a number of its customers ended up loathing. Probably an astute move on Ford's part. And the Mark 7 would continue on to be a very successful automobile, and of course, it was on the same platform as the Ford Thunderbird as it had been in previous years, as well as by this point, the Mercury Cougar. In fact, there are some rumors that the design of the Mercury Cougar's rear backlight and C-pillar was originally supposed to be placed on the Mark 7, and that that design was changed at the last minute, and the Cougar ended up getting the vertical C-pillar as opposed to the Mark 7. Regardless of how the Mark 7 styling evolved, I think you would agree that it is a tastefully handsome car. And as I mentioned, my favorite are the LSC Mark 7s. They just have a bit more sinister look to them. Let's take a brief look at a video from the mid 80s showing how the Comtech would have worked. And here you have it, one of the Mark 7 Comtechs. There's the Comtech system itself. You notice the individual's pushing the button, changing the climate control there. You can see the cooler and warmer buttons. There's the fuel economy readout with instant and average fuel economy, a trip computer, a clock as well as a calendar function ability to control a speed alert as well as display various vehicle information elements and system checks. Also, you could change the displayed units from English to metric and just turn the system off entirely. Here's a look at those steering wheel controls, which, as I mentioned, could operate the Comtech as well as exterior functions like the headlights, the wipers, and you could also change the radio, turning it on or off and adjusting the volume and the stations. So the Comtech was a pretty sweet idea, but perhaps one that customers just weren't willing to accept back in the mid-1980s. And I would make the argument that Ford really dodged the bullet here and let Buick take the brunt of the unfavorable press associated with their CRT screen or graphic control center. But what do you think? Was this something that Ford made a mistake on and not introducing in the mid-1980s, especially given that it's prevalent on almost every car today? But I do still think even on Cars Today, people kind of universally hate it, at least a little bit. Thanks again for watching this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to comment, and if you haven't yet subscribed, do so. Thanks again for watching.